Welcome you to worship, and we want to welcome Bishop Mark and his wife Sheila to worship this morning. Uh, it's an exciting day because we are confirming uh, some adults today, as well as uh, reaffirming one adult. And so with that, let us begin worship. Loving God, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and take from them levies of grain. You have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. 
You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteousness, the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying Psalm 90, found on page 4 of your bulletin. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of your days that you afflict us and the years that we have suffered adversity. Show your servants and their works and gracious wonder to their children. May the gracious and loving God upon us prosper and work our hands, prosper our handiwork. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? 
No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these th things since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, for not, but for not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left his house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses brothers and sisters mothers and children and fields with persecution and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first the gospel of the lord Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Father. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here at St. John. Sheila and I are very honored and delighted to be with this community we love so much. Um, it is a little warmer now than at 745, <laughs> uh, starting to feel the wings, you know, uh, spread out a little bit. Um, it's wonderful. That was a great service as well. I think they save lessons like this for when the bishop comes. <laughs> um, it, and we're not going to sidestep it. It's a very important uh, lesson for, it comes from the mouth of the Savior. And it is uh, a deep teaching about the beloved community. So I want to uh, say why I say beloved community. At that point, you've heard me say it 1,000 times. You've heard the presiding bishop uh, talk about the beloved community. You may remember that the last message of Representative John Lewis uh, upon his death was about the beloved community and about the maintenance of the beloved community. Uh, and you know that it was uh, at the heart of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's teaching. He said that uh, the end of reconciliation and the tools of nonviolence is the beloved community. But what has that got to do with today's lesson? Beloved community is a better way to say kingdom of God. And I invite you to, to use it. Try it out. Insert it into things where normally you have kingdom of God. Thy beloved community come on earth as it is in heaven. That's a different feel, isn't it? Um, maybe we've had enough of kingdoms. Uh, and kings and queens and emperors and empresses. Uh, that's sort of why my ancestors came to this country. Um, but let's talk about how did that happen, this beloved community idea instead of kingdom of God. It's just not a suggestion I'm making. It is a better translation of kingdom of God. So this is how it happened. Just a little quick foray into, into this. Um, beloved community was taught to the Reverend Martin Luther King by the great Howard Thurman. And Howard Thurman learned it from 
somebody you probably don't know, the founder of the Fellowship of Reconciliation, A.J. Musty, who was a labor organizer and a, a UCC, a congregational minister. And he learned it, Musty learned it from a guy named Josiah Royce, who was born in Grass Valley, California, <laughs> just after the, the uh, gold rush started. So his parents were from Cornwall. There was a whole influx of people from Cornwall to come work in the gold fields and to do other jobs related to, uh, related to the gold rush. They, they were looking for a new life. And he was a little boy born in uh, Cornwall but raised in Grass Valley. He went to the University of California, which was not the University of California at Berkeley, because there was no more, there was no UC system. It was a new university. It was only seven years old when he went to uh, UC. Uh, then he got one of the first four PhDs from um, Johns Hopkins University. They hadn't been granting PhDs at all before that. He was one of the first four. He ended up teaching at Harvard with William James. Uh, and, and other luminaries. And in 1913, Royce, who was a philosopher, looked at the world. So what is 1913? It's the edge of World War I. It's the year before that first world war begins. And he writes a book called The Problem of Christianity. The Problem of Christianity. And the problem of Christianity was that he saw the world was about to fall apart as it is falling apart, yet today, right? That there was a, a, a new kind of um, loosening of uh, sureties and certainties that was coming. He actually spoke of the avalanche of technology. And I think he was thinking of war technology uh, that was coming. And, and so he saw the problems coming, not in their detail, but in their broad, since. And he said the church is no longer in a position to be the help that it should be. Um, for good reasons and bad reasons. For good reasons, uh, we no longer had armies. So your church, the Episcopal Church, has made a deep uh, compact not only with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, but also with the Moravians. And I was in the House of Bishops when we came close to the Moravians, and they spoke to us. And they said, we've never had a country unlike the Church of England, unlike Germany with Lutheranism, you know, etc. What's the significance of that? They went on to say, that means we've never had an army. And we were never tempted to that kind of violence because we never had it to begin with. Okay. So... Um, so this is the kind of power that was taken away from the churches, thank God. Uh, but there was also the move towards science as an explanation of life. Darwin's theory had only been around 40 or 50 years at this point and it was changing the world, right? The world was no longer just 5,000 years old. <laughs> we were descended from monkeys, as it were. Um, you know, problems for problems for traditional Christianity. And Royce said, this is a problem for Christianity because we are needed. People of faith are needed. And he went about trying to translate terms that were central to the New Testament, central to Jesus' teaching, into words that people in the world could understand. And one of them was kingdom of God. And he said, we don't need a kingdom of God. And it's not what Jesus intended. We need a beloved community. So that's where it comes from, the beloved community. Uh, and I do invite you to try it out. <laughs> put, put it in place of kingdom and your life will change. Um, I, I sort of guarantee that. Um, so Jesus says in the second instance in this gospel, not that the wealthy find it difficult to get into the kingdom of heaven, but everybody. The second time he says it, he says, how difficult, children, it is to enter the beloved community. <laughs> well, that's a shock. And that's what his disciples, what the gospel says his disciples were amazed. The man who had run up, uh, 
he was not just amazed, he was shocked. And he went away grieving because he had many landed possessions. He had a great deal of land, it appears. But it was more than that. It was, it was a whole way of living that was being called into question by Jesus a way of living that we would say is consonant with the dominant culture of our world and that we needed to let go of and enter into this beloved community. So so what would that mean? Well, we can get some clues to that uh, if we look at the early Christ- history of Christianity. Um, and I'm not going to do, you know, do too much history uh, with you. I already you get the cut of my jib, right, you know, like, <laughs> he talks a lot, A, eh? and uh, <laughs> and he gets off into a little area, okay. Um, however, this is important stuff. And uh, so in the first four centuries of Christianity, Christians were countercultural by definition. Mm-hmm. They lived under the heels of an empire, and they were not of the empire. They were not citizens of the empire, and they were followers of a god who was not the emperor. Many Christians were called martyrs. Martyrs is a word that just means a witness, but the witness cost them. And it would have been simple. It would have been very simple to pour a little wine onto an altar in the name of the emperor, and they would not do it, and they died as a result. So this is how serious this division between this early way of being a a religious person was and the empire. But there were other ways. The book of Acts tells us that no one lacked for anything in that early Jerusalem community because they held all things in common and they made sure that no one was hungry and no one was unhoused and that all were taken care of in the community, in that beloved community. Can we say the same? Yeah. Um, women were honored. Who was the first apostle? An unnamed woman by the well goes back to her village and tells the story of Jesus. And Jesus basically says to his closest followers, would that you were like her. And then who is the first witness to the resurrection? Mary Magdalene. And who was Jesus' best student? The same woman, Mary Magdalene. That's the same as Mary of Bethany. You can argue with me about that, and it's okay. Um, I could be wrong. But um, Mary of Bethany sat at the feet of Jesus, and it made her sister really mad because she was doing everything you all have been doing, getting the reception together, you know, getting life together. Uh, And Mary sat at Jesus' feet, and he said to Martha, whom he loved, he said, Martha, Mary has chosen the better part. That is to be a disciple. She was the chief disciple. So women were respected. They held everything in common. It's a different way of living. And this is the beloved community. So what happened? What happened? Well... Constantine happened. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still in the, uh, I'm still in the history piece. Um, <laughs> with Constantine, after 400 years of living like that, that's a long time to be a faithful church that is at odds with the empire. After 400 years, Constantine said, "Oh, I'm one of them," and that meant that they became of the empire. And we have never left that for 1,500 years. We're emerging. My siblings, we're emerging. So things are happening to return us to the beloved community. It's called the restoration of the beloved community and the healing of the beloved community. It's not a given. It's not a given. It's it's works of justice. So... After 1,500 years, maybe 2,000 years, we're ordaining women. It's been 50 years, but let me say how significant this is. And we're in the presence of a pioneer. How significant is this? 
There are one billion and a half Roman Catholics in the world. There are 800 million Orthodox Christians in the world. There are 88 million Anglicans in the world. And only the Episcopal Church, the Church of England, and a few other parts of the Anglican Communion ordain women. Think about it. So, there's that. Um, we can take this through all these areas of how we live together and say that we are emerging. We are emerging from being enmeshed with the empire. And this is something to be thankful for. Thanks be to God. We are becoming the beloved community. But, my siblings, there is more to be done. So I just commend you so much, along with the Diocese of California as a whole, for sacred ground. Black people, brown people, indigenous people, they have known forever what systemic racism looks like because they've lived it in their lives. But the consciousness of the country and the consciousness of our church is finally joining them and understanding what justice looks like. Are we done with that work? Far, far, far from done with that work. The second area, also here at St. John's, so beautiful, and Sheila and I just thank you so much, is the care of the earth. And this, again, is uh, really, even, even that is something of a departure from even where the early church was. But we've exacerbated it. The Industrial Revolution has meant that we live an extractive lifestyle. We live an extractive lifestyle. And we live a consumerist lifestyle. This is where we are. And to emerge from that is perhaps the most revolutionary movement ever to face humanity. And you are helping lead that. So we are moving into the beloved community. There's much to be done in that area. Not only is it an existential threat, uh, but it is, it is not how God dreamed for us to live. So there's that. But finally, again, particular to you, St. John's, and the Diocese of California, where we are located. Um, one of these things is not like the other. They taught us in Sesame Street. The Diocese of California is really not like any diocese in the Episcopal Church, because Northern California is really not like any other area. And part of that is, you would agree with me, Silicon Valley, and the technological innovations that have made enormous wealth, back to this problem. <laughs> of the, um, and we have something to do about that. So I want to say the name Francis Hogan. You recognize this. This is a young woman who testified to Congress about uh, what Facebook, Instagram, Twitter uh, is, is doing deliberately to young people's lives and other people's lives, all of our lives. Did you know that she is an Episcopalian? Did you know? <laughs> Did you know that her mother is an Episcopal priest? <laughs> Good for us. Um, <laughs> but I, I say that not because of that, but because this is what Christians must do. Yes. 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 Within the world in which we live, we must continue the work of repairing the beloved community where it is broken, where it has been distorted, we must be the people because Jesus is calling us to do this, to stand up for what is true and what is right in the world. So it is not something Jesus said to hurt the people that he was with. He was not trying to wound this man. In fact, when it says he looked at him and loved him, I believe that's true. In the word it says, he looked into him and loved him. And he wasn't a bad guy. 
He had kept all those teachings since he was a youth. It is not impossible to enter into the beloved community. It's just that it takes giving everything up. <laughs> For the sake of following not Jesus, but the one who created Jesus and the one who created you and me. That is the one Jesus called Father, which is the living God. And this is what you're promised. If you will follow, is a relationship with the living God and a new community. Peter says, Jesus, we have given up everything to follow you. And Jesus says, okay, Peter, as usual, you're the one you know, who <laughs> speaks out. Let me tell you this. And he says, he says this, anyone who has given up father, mother, brother, sister, children, land, wealth, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will in this time, in this time, not at the end of time, in this time receive the same with persecutions. That's a promise that he makes. So, do you believe him? That's a question. <laughs> I'm from the South. <laughs> People, you know, can't speak. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Do you believe Jesus? <laughs> okay, so that then um, I would invite you to actually look around at each other. Take a moment and really don't look at me, look at each other. So you are the ones you've been waiting for. You are what God has given each other. You may be slightly disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's reality. It's a great gift. God has given you the beloved community here and now. And what separates you from a social club is that at the heart of that beloved community, this community, St. John's, the Diocese of California, the Episcopal Church, is a living God. And you have been given the gift of knowing a living God who loves you and has planted love in our hearts so that we can live consciously as the beloved community. Amen. Amen. I present these persons for confirmation or for the reaffirmation of the baptismal vows. And this question is for those uh, reaffirming their baptismal vows or being confirmed. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? 
I do, and with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. And this is for the gathered community, joyfully here to support these people. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread? and in the prayers. I will do God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will do God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will do God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will do God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of the earth and of every human being? I will do God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us hold these being confirmed and this one reaffirming her baptismal vows in our hearts in silence to God. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you have made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
Send, O Lord, your servant Gabriel to your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until we come to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. And we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we welcome you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant children with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. As you are The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let's welcome the new compromise. <laughs> pleasure again to have the bishop here and his wife and so I want to invite you to stick around for coffee hour and some cake that we have uh, for today to celebrate today's occasion. Um, next Sunday we start off with a stewardship uh, Sunday and so I want to bring Lila up to talk about that. Good morning everyone. Good morning. It's wonderful to visit the later service. <laughs> um, we're beginning to get into our last week of stewardship. You'll be getting either delivered to you or by mail your stewardship packages. There are four sessions left um, this week. Growing with God, how we recognize and celebrate the presence of God in all we do. Gifts given, gifts received, Gifts Disguised and Uncovered Through Community. Grappling with the Church, moving beyond a tradition dominated by Euro-masculine values and in honoring the feminine divine. Grateful, glad, and giving, moving towards year-round stewardship, and by that we mean stewardship in all senses of the word. You will be getting in your package 
two letters. Um, they have very different tones. And I want you to read both of them, please. It's worthy. It's worth your time. And St. John's is worth your time and your commitment and your love and your contributions. Thank you very much. Also next week, we'll be uh, commissioning our uh, Youth and Family Renovations team. If you aren't aware, we are on this uh, journey for the next 18 months of overhauling our youth and family programs with our partner, Ministry Architects. And so, uh, so we want to commission this work that this Youth Renovations team will be doing in creating processes and helping our Youth and Family program look to the future of what it can be here at St. John. So uh, come and help celebrate with that. For uh, education coming up, uh, tomorrow is the last day to sign up for Sacred Ground. We only have one group this fall. It's going to be Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom with Ann Meyer. Uh, there's only a few slots left if you're interested, but we wanted to uh, conclude the registration day to be Indigenous Peoples Day. We thought that was a great way to symbolize that day. So if you're interested, you'd be joining the thir more than 30 people that have already finish sacred ground in this uh, community and we want to continue to encourage everyone to be a part of that. It is an important conversation to have uh, and you learn a lot about your own uh, history and lineage with, with this, this course. Uh, October 20th we, uh, is a Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. We will have a uh, faith forum online. Uh, it'll, the, the subject is the uh, school to prison pipeline and so we're going to learn more about uh, how 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 our schools become system systemic issues into back into prisons and how this uh, this goes around racial justice issues. Uh, this will be presented by our Genesis interns, and then we're going to learn more about how we can get involved right here in Alameda County uh, to help stop that prison to school to prison pipeline. And with that, I'll turn it over to Scott. I've really been enjoying this. I uh, haven't been doing anything. <laughs> the bishop said, well, you know, I, uh, it's really been a great day for him. I said, what are you doing next week? <laughs> uh, take I don't know. <laughs> so uh, one of the, the uh, stewardship uh, uh, discussions we had, which was really powerful and fascinating, was about the environment. Uh, how do we green our church? How do we green our lives? And uh, lots of great creative thinking was coming out of that. St. John's has a long tradition of ecology that dates back. And we, we, uh, we've let some of that slip, in my opinion. I think that the, the values are still there, but the opportunities uh, now uh, more than ever are to come together, not just as individuals, but as communities, and, and figure out uh, how we can best steward the gift of creation. Um, now, we all know uh, the bishop's resume, uh, I mean, as representing at the United Nations and at the, in the Anglican uh, Communion, uh, his, his uh, incredible work on the environment. Uh, so we're very grateful for that. But I'm going to depart a little bit and ask his wife, Sylvia, to come speak. Sheila, Sheila. Oh, Sheila, sorry. Uh, Sheila, to come and speak about Sustain Island Home. She did this at the early service. And, uh, uh, because uh, we really want to support what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. That leaf blower is <laughs> I stop blowing those leaves. But um, Sustain Island Home is an online program that can help you know how to decrease your greenhouse gas emissions in your home. 40% of greenhouse gas emissions that we need to lower are household activity related to how you power your home, your local transportation, air transportation, nutritional choices, and recycling. So this online program 
has e extraordinary data analytics. It gives you a really um, very good estimate of how much your uh, how much your, uh, your uh, greenhouse gas contributions are costing you financially, uh, how they relate to your water use. Um, and there are 70 to 90 options that you can pick. A lot of them you're already doing, probably. And that's okay because it will be tabulated as well. But here's the great thing about this program. Every time you make a choice, it adds to others in this congregation. You get to see the difference you're making together. The algorithms take it up to the level of the diocese and then across the Episcopal Church. We're already up to 2,000 users in the Episcopal Church. We're embarking on uh, new work to make it easier to use and access, and it is important. In 2018, the Intergovernmental Panel uh, on Climate Change, thousands of scientists all over the world came to the United Nations and they said some, something that was really concerning they said those catastrophic tipping points that we projected at two degrees of warming are going to happen at 1.5. We're at 1.1 right now. And they said at the UN, this is a science body. Please hear us. Every half degree of warming matters and every choice matters. So that is why Ambassador Ker Kerry is leading the U.S. in an all-society approach. And we need everybody involved. So this program can get you started. There's so much to do, but it's a really easy way to get involved. And I just want to thank you. I know this is a congregation that has been caring for creation a long time that I've offered to Scott and to John to um, introduce this program to you by Zoom. I invite everyone to join in and be part of this because it not only helps you move into a more sustainable life in your own home, support each other, but it helps us to be better advocates. The one thing at every level, local, state, national, and international is People wonder, do you walk the talk? We can say we walk the talk. We've got policies, but we can also take action. So I thank you so much for this chance to Thank you, Sheila. And on behalf of St. John's, we would like to give you this gift of $1,000 towards, towards this effort. And uh, we also pledge to show up on Zoom, don't we? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, thank you. So I, I, this will go towards some of our multimedia that we need to do and make this program even easier to all yes. Episcopalians. So I thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. advertisement. Um, last week, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Pope, and the head of the Orthodox Church, uh, His All Holiness, came together to talk about faith and science. This coming week, there's a program. Mark Andrus is one of the speakers. I think he's speaking on Tuesday. You can see it by Zoom. Um, and uh, I'm just very proud of the work that Mark is doing on all of our behalf. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are there birthdays, anniversaries, or transitions that we can honor today? Ah, I think I know what this is about. <laughs> Oh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. so Congratulations. We, so we have a transition. We um, bought a house with mom. 
um, a duplex My down elder in Elder Care. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, National Park, and we move in two weeks. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Let us join together in the uh, birthday, anniversary, and transition prayer. O oh God, yeah. our times are in your hands. Look with favor and pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant us that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust and goodness all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Repertory sentence, and you guys can all go to that QR code or the realm and make your offering. If you choose the rector's discretionary fund today only, uh, that money will also that will go to Island Home and this effort for the environment today. So that's how we're going to keep track of what uh, that happens. So thank you. Uh, let us, with joy-filled hearts, offer the fruits of our life and labor to God.
what a wonderful anthem. Well done. <laughs> God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island's home. By your will, we were created and have our being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed the trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconciled us, by his wounds you are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Oh, holy, 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 holy Lord, Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob, Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body and spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And, um, why don't we just substitute beloved community for kingdom? <laughs> just see how that goes. Okay. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy beloved kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this 
our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome.
thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, and now Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to give to you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Be patient with everyone. But make no peace with oppression. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, the source of all being, the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.